We're going to be joined by PJ Oleksak, um, the CEO of Nuts.com, and Angelo Voss, the CEO of Marketing Architects, on how to transform your linear and CTV campaigns for maximum ROIs. Please help me in welcoming them to the stage. Thanks for joining us today. We're excited to talk about television and how to ultimately drive ROI and scale. Um, in a channel like television. Uh, I am Angela Voss, CEO at Marketing Architects. We are a TV-only agency, have been in business for over 27 years. Um, prior to working in television, I grew up in digital marketing, so I've both loved and hated uh, the, the mix between digital and TV and how they work together. Um, and I'm joined by PJ yes, Alexa. I'll stand so we yes. can both be tall. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having um, me. PJ is the CEO at Nuts.com, a client of ours for over four years, um, and such a great partnership. I mean, we just have really loved working with you. Same. And obviously, you can see the fun brand, the little characters, et cetera. So again, hopefully everyone enjoys that. All right. So before I dive in here, um, just a little bit about who is Marketing Architects. Um, there we go. What is Marketing Architects? Like I said, we are a TV-only ad agency. We work in both linear and CTV and are really known for kind of disrupting the traditional approach to television. Um, a lot of times the channel is really thought of as super expensive, hard to measure, and we wanted to set out to bring greater accountability um, because it's such a massive potential for brands to drive growth. We do that under a, a guise called all-inclusive television, which I don't have time to go into today, but Happy to answer questions afterwards about what that means. Think all-inclusive resort gets you about halfway there. Um, all right, so diving in, I'm starting off with a quote here from Peter Field. If you don't know him, he is a marketing effectiveness guru. He, uh, he leads effectiveness at Adam and Eve DDB. And he says here, any marketer who considers walking away from TV advertising would be crazy to do so. Obviously, we need him on our sales team. We feel the same way. <laughs> um, but I would just add one word that he might be missing, which is effective television advertising. And TV can be a channel that is hard to make work. Um, and so that's what we want to talk about today and provide some tips on how to drive success. And so the first one here is TV's ROI power hinges on efficient reach. There's a lot of talk today about efficiency versus effectiveness. And through a lot of data that we have, they are highly correlated. And so efficiency absolutely does matter in terms of the cost to acquire the media. Um, I think the epitome example, of course, is the Super Bowl, uh, a time of year when everyone in America seems to know how much it costs to air in, in the Super Bowl $7 million in 2024 for a 30-second ad creative. So obviously, that's an extreme example. Um, there are a lot more efficient ways to use television. A lot of folks might say, what about CTV, right? That's a new space where we can get into um, for less cost. And although the absolute cost to enter might be less, it's a bit sneaky because the streaming space is actually higher on a CPM basis than the linear environment. And that's really driven by the technology fees that exist, right? You've got SSP fees, DSP fees, ad exchange fees, third-party targeting costs. It just climbs and climbs. And ultimately, uh, a lot of brands find themselves reaching a point at which the cost is just prohibitive and ROI becomes unfeasible. So how do we go about tackling this? Um, before I get into how, why does it matter? So I got a chart here. I'm going to explain it just a little bit. Along the left-hand side, we've got reach percentage as reported by Nielsen and Samba. And along the bottom, the x-axis is TV media cost as reported by Kantar. Um, a focus on efficiency has massive potential. So that middle band represents 50 to 60% reach in the television space. On the left, we've got uh, the average of some of our larger clients reaching 50% reach for roughly $50 million in investment into TV. On the right-hand side, we've got the top five advertisers in television. I'm talking about brands like Home Depot, Walmart, uh, IBM, et cetera. You've seen them all out there. Uh, achieving 60% reach at $575 million in television. And so an applied, dedicated, strategic approach to television really allows you to kind of hack the cost structure that exists um, and obviously transformative to be at a tenth the cost of kind of the largest players in TV for similar reach. So 
how do we do this? Um, when we dive into some of the approaches, number one, don't limit your media plan to just the largest networks or publishers that are out there. I think when we move into television, oftentimes we think about um, where we think the audience might be. We often will go, well, I need to be on Hulu, I need to be on ESPN, and there's absolutely approaches that we take to get on those networks as well. But when we solely limit ourselves to those, we're often purchasing eyeballs at the highest cost. As a viewer, as a consumer, we're very broad in our TV viewing habits. And so while you might find me on HGTV, you might also find me in a lot of other places as well. And so making those right selections in terms of where to purchase that eyeball becomes really important to ensure that you have efficiency and ultimately effectiveness. Secondly, when we move into television, oftentimes we're coming out of digital and we've gotten really good at understanding who our core consumer is. Uh, we would call that core consumer, that ideal customer, the bullseye target. Um, and when we move into television, we're reaching, uh, we're in a broad reach channel where there's a ton of opportunity to reach additional consumers that maybe we didn't go after in, in, in the digital space. And by widening that view on who our consumer is, it allows us more optionality in terms of pricing um, and allows us to really broaden what the growth potential looks like. So that's the second thing. And then lastly, and probably most importantly, I know I'm probably the 94th person today to mention AI to you, so I apologize for that, but technology is super important to gain that max reach at the lowest cost. I think a lot of marketers still look at the television space as, well, we've got scatter and we've got upfront and we've maybe got remnants. You know, those are kind of the three buckets um, up and coming. We've been doing it since 2018 is, is AI procured media. And that really allows brands access to high reach channels at the lowest cost and ultimately is a huge driver of efficiency and effectiveness. All right, so it's not just media. Media is super important, but creative also is extremely important. Obviously, you're taking the big stage. Um, and so one of the things I want to hit on is a lot of times marketers get a little bit confused about, well, I'm entering a branding channel, but I also want to drive sales. So how do I do that? How do I balance the two? And this is an age old debate. I mean, if you think about like old school kind of DR ads, the blue screen, the 800 number, and someone's yelling at you versus the Coca-Colas <laughs> of the world, right? And, and campaigns that we all know and love. And there's a litany of examples, but all impacts are, are powerful here, and TV is really a, has a superpower in its ability to do both. So how do we do that? How do we think about that? Um, simple things like including a call to action, but also telling a story. So if we think about consumers in a brand like Nuts.com, um, I'm in market for snacks all, all the time, really. I mean, you don't really need to convince me too hard to be um, in market, but maybe for something like pest control, um, you know, we always say a TV ad doesn't create a mouse in your kitchen. So you, it, television has the capability to hit consumers that are in market for your product or service today and absolutely drive immediate sales measurably um, and accountably, but also not everyone that we hit is going to be in market for your product or service at the time that they see a TV ad. And so we also want to be memorable and ensure that we're building mental availability for you know, years to come. Um, and I think PJ will do a great job of, of kind of talking through how nuts.com has done that. So I'll hand it over to PJ. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Making sure I'm clicking this right. Yep, once more, I think. There we go. Okay, thank you, Angela. Um, again, PJ Alexak, I joined Nuts.com in 2021 um, and now serve as the CEO. I have an incredible team I have the privilege of working with and a great partnership with the MAA team that's been supporting us for many years. And TV's been actually a significant part of our growth journey. Um, Nuts.com wasn't always Nuts.com. It was actually founded as the Newark Nut Company back in 1929, um, selling bulk nuts and dried fruits out of a small family-owned store. Um, and then in the late 90s, which is still forever ago to many of us, we launched nutsonline.com to bring our offering nationally. Um, and then the name eventually evolved to nuts.com, which was a really fun story um, when we have a little bit more time. Um, today, more than 90 years after the company was founded, nuts.com is actually still family owned um, and still selling premium nuts, fruits, snacks, and has been doing so for three generations, which is pretty incredible. 
Um, but decades after transforming into this e-commerce business of significant size, we were ready to take our next step in growth. Um, and so how do we do that? That's when we actually connected, and this was even before my arrival into the company, with marketing architects in hopes that we could actually build our brand name and our customer base through TV. However, we are a company, because of our private ownership and our rigorous kind of financial goals, we, it was very important to us that we actually focused on not only building the brand, but also meeting our sales objectives and doing so efficiently through our campaigns. Um, Marketing Architects, as Angela has shared a bit, is a full service agency. So they've managed everything from our brand strategy to our creative production to our attribution and have really helped us. Um, And in 2020, we launched our first ever TV campaign. Weeks after launching the campaign, we were attracting new audiences. We were highlighting our nuts, our fruits, our snacks nationally. And then our national aided awareness actually rose more than 100% while driving a positive return on our ad spend. New customers increased 166%, setting a company growth record. Um, And in fact, we were getting more impressions on TV than planters, who we're very proud of. You might know them. Um, And so significant progress for a brand that really hadn't been doing much of any advertising previously. But that initial campaign was really just the beginning of our journey on TV. Um, It continues today to be a significant portion of our advertising spend. We've long positioned ourselves as an online grocery company, thinking about that long tail pantry. How can we provide for you all of the different things that you need from a shelf stable standpoint? But actually, with great partnership and our research that we had done with Marketing Architects, they helped us understand that there was a different avenue um, and that we should be considering being more positioned in the snacking category um, as well. So after conducting a brand study with Marketing Architects' strategy team, we found that Nuts.com was actually repositioning as a online snacking brand, increased our contextual awareness by 136% and shifting our messaging focus, this goes back to the creative point you were just making, improved our relevance, particularly amongst younger demographics, which so many of us are trying to make sure we stay hip and relevant with, especially even as you're thinking of a channel like Linear TV. So TV was, for us, the perfect place to really broadcast our new positioning and get very increased, fast awareness um, and communicate through new creative the shift that we made by highlighting a broader range of snacks. As you can imagine, with the name nuts.com, that can be limiting. People think we're just nuts, but we're actually much more than that, Um, some of which I hope you're enjoying today. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I want to show you a little bit more about our creative and how we help bring this to life. This was led by the marketing architects team um, as we tried to reposition and help our customers and the broader market understand that we're much more than just nuts. Um, And let me know what you think about it. We went with the website nuts.com because nuts and dried fruit and pretzels and trail mix and gummies and chocolate and espresso beans and malted milk balls and crackers and popcorn and sesame sticks and veggie chips and energy squares and fudge and jelly beans and seeds and rock candy and saltwater taffy and dried berries and fruit leather and bars and jerky and a whole lot more dot com was already taken. Get 20% off and free shipping on your first order at nuts.com. Yes, we have more than nuts, but still the website is just nuts.com. Love the chuckles. So work like this has really been incredible for us. As a, as a privately held business that's very focused on not only achieving our growth goals, but also doing so really efficiently and effectively. And we are rigorous about measurement. I was listening to the prior session for those of you that were in it. Um, but this partnership and our work with Linear TV has actually been incredible for not only building our brand, but also our sales results. And if I think back to our first ever campaign, when we saw the 100% increase in a awareness and the 166% increase in new customers, all from the same creative, it just, it's proven to us that it can work really well to bring these campaigns together. And it's just really impactful just to be focused on both brand building and performance. And you don't actually have to make the trade, which I think, you know, at some point in my career earlier on, I definitely thought you did. Awesome. I'll pass it back to you. All right. 
So I think the last thing to touch on here is if we're talking about driving effective, efficient, you know, television results, um, something that's scalable, we have to be able to measure it, right? Um, I think a lot of marketers come into television thinking that it could take a really long time to measure it. Um, we might not be able to measure it. It might just be a brand awareness play. Um, but lots of evolution has happened in this space. So I want to talk a little bit about that. So we look at measuring micro, macro, and business results um, in three separate buckets. And so if I just dive into those a little bit, micro is more of your short-term performance. Business is more of your long-term performance. Micro would be anywhere from a minute to say 10 minutes after a spot airs. So for nuts.com, we go out and purchase you know, a, a spot on CNN. Um, we've got nuts.com pixeled and we can see immediately a web spike above baseline to, to, their, to their website. And so that would be micro. It could also be 800 number calls. We do have campaigns that still have 800 numbers, insurance and things like that, QR code scans, app downloads. But what's happening in that first like 10 minutes is really that micro, leading indicators of success, not the whole picture. Macro would be shifts in traffic composition. There was a lot of discussion in the last session about lifetime value. That's a big one. Often we see that television drives a better lifetime value than some other channels. Not that anyone's comparing. I'm just saying that, the, that we see that. Um, and things like conversion shifts, that type of thing. So macro would be more weeks to months. Um, business impacts are typically you know, four to six months after. So we're measuring brand awareness, things like pricing power, stock price changes. TV has immense potential to, to move a lot of needles different than um, you know, some other channels. So it's really important to look at all of them. Uh, the other piece that I would speak to here is uh, a lot of times when marketers come into television, we've already kind of established what are those go-to key KPIs that the business has, which absolutely we should be looking at. We need to you know, relatively understand television's performance versus a, any other channel. Um, but given the fact that TV really is a full funnel, channel, we need to kind of widen that view. And so work with your agency, your partner, your internal team, whomever it might be to really lay out if television was successful, what other KPIs might we see move that really today we don't look at? That would really allow you to fur further and deeper understand what television does. So like I said, pricing power, email tech signups, return on ad spend, cost per visit, whatever it might be that broadens the funnel um, is an important thing. And then the other piece that we always suggest is really developing theories on what's going to optimize the campaign in advance. So test and learn scenarios, right? How is linear going to perform in comparison to streaming? Um, and how will we optimize to that? If we've got you know, incremental reach happening in streaming, but it's not performing maybe at the same ROI as what, uh, what linear is, what will we do about that? You know, those are go good things to think through. How does creative uh, spot length impact performance? Um, you know, on a 15 second creative, if it's performing uh, worse than a 30 second spot, do we value that frequency? Because maybe it's building, you know, long term awareness, that type of thing. And then um, I've had already mentioned, you know, LTB in comparison to some other channels, and what would we want to see from television? Lastly, um, just diving into a bit here, we are big believers in multiple attribution models. Um, TV is not a channel that you can get a single read on. Uh, you will for sure head in the wrong direction with a single read. Um, and we know this because our clients have no less than 10 models running at one time. We really believe in triangulation of performance um, using micro attribution. We have on-site surveys. We have MMM that we run, econometric modeling. We use ACR technology. And so um, it's really important, you know, we're believers that all models are wrong, um, but some are very useful. And in order to have that confidence that your TV campaign is really performing at the level that you think it is so that you can go back to your team, ask for more investments, um, super important. All right, so wrapping us up here, um, the three tips we talked through, leaning into that efficient reach, efficiency is really gonna drive effectiveness. Um, number two, let's use the same commercial to drive both sales and branding. And then three, it's all about measurement, right? Uh, micro macro business, a super important piece. We had so much that we could not get into this uh, 20 minutes, but 
If you were to scan the QR code, we have a report with a ton more client stories, more data. Um, additionally, we have a kiosk at 247 up on the third floor and are happy to answer any questions um, or just chat about you know, experiences and, and, and TV in general. So thank you, PJ, so much for joining thank us. Thank you, thank you for your partnership. Yeah, thanks everyone.